I've given my expectations for Sword Art Online in 2022. I guess it's time I give a straight answer for the rest of VR, too. Let's address the Nerve Gear first, since this video will be pretty short if it's all I talk about. I don't think we'll have a Nerve Gear by 2022. Not even 2032. I'll consider 2042, but reserve judgment on that till we get past 2025 and we can be thoroughly sure whether or not we're bound for a computational plateau or not. Everyone, we're only just now starting to barely be able to try to read on an individual neuronal level what's going on in our brains. We're going to need decades before we see Sword Art Online's implementation in a broader mainstream solution. And that's just for reading our brain activity. Altering activity is still not on the table, unless you yourself are willing to get on the table too, and let somebody open your head and put some things in it while you're at it. The nerve gear was the thing that made Sword Art Online as special as it was, both in the good sense and the bad sense. So of course, it bears to say that the Sword Art Online I'm expecting for 2022 wouldn't be able to reach its full potential without this kind of tech there to support it. But I am still expecting a Sword Art Online game in 2022 that supports virtual reality, so what kind of tech am I expecting to accompany this game? To be blunt, not much better than what we have today. VR headset, headphones, motion controls, really, that's just about it. Said headsets, headphones, and motion controls will be way better than what we have today. Michael A. Brash's Oculus Connect 2018 talk kind of points to the headsets of 2022 being outright awesome. Higher fields of view, higher clarity, better optical technology, better tracking, it's just gonna be a better solution all around to what we have. But at the end of the day, they are still just incremental improvements over a core revolutionary design. Is a PS4 better than a PS3? In just about every way. Are you still sitting in front of a TV with a similar looking controller? Yep. From where I've been looking at things these past few years, it seems that the attention of the bigger companies in the space have been gravitating towards the lower end of the experience rather than improving on the high end for consumers. Sure, we get our Pimaxes, Haptic X Clubs, and Virtuix Omnis, but most of the attention from players like Oculus and Google are aimed towards the lower end of the market with things like Cardboard, Daydream, PlayStation VR, and Oculus Quest. Getting the barrier to entry for people to try the more high quality level of VR experiences is the priority, and the part that kills the enthusiast in me to admit is that that's probably for the best. VR is still a very small medium, and for this medium to grow, it is going to need the mass market audience that is willing to pour in the money for lower end projects to fund the high end projects that will come down the line. Lowering the barrier to entry will only help us in the long run, but the price of that is the short term stagnation in the amount of change we're seeing in the VR experience. The other areas of VR that remain to be tackled, haptics, smell, taste, temperature, and more are still in their earliest infancy with regards to their ability to be fully immersed, and I don't expect this to change much in the next five years. All the haptic and thermal sense issues are especially tricky to work with just due to the difference in scale. You can put a screen in front of your eyes, a smell dispenser in front of your nose, an electrode on your tongue, and a pair of headphones over your ears, but tackling touch is a full body endeavor, and the economies of scale involved are much trickier because designing items for the whole body require either high adjustability, user to user tailoring, or a carpet bombing solution that just brings products out in every single shape and size in order to deal with all the humans that come in several shapes and sizes. The only way to deal with touch is to either create a solution that spans the whole body, or to go straight for the central nervous system where everything converges and trying to get a solution from there. As such, barring a few specialist companies and people who are just outright nuts like me, don't expect to be buying or wearing a Ready Player One haptic suit to be a part of the normal VR experience. At the end of the day, the elephant in the room that I need to address here is also just the VR locomotion problem. I did an entire video on it a little while ago, but my thoughts on the matter as it relates to this topic 
are that I don't see it being solved by 2022. So long as motion controls remain VR's primary paradigm for manipulating an avatar in the virtual space, immersive VR locomotion and force feedback just won't be mainstream. It's just the inherent nature of motion control technology. You can't make the virtual world's outputs react or have a significant impact on the real world just due to the fact that things that are virtual occur in the virtual space and things that occur in the real space occur in the real space. VR technology is supposed to bridge that and until we develop an adequate bridge that can do so for motion, we just shouldn't be expecting these kind of things. All in all though, for the VR industry as a whole, I'm actually expecting that it's going to be taking the back seat pretty soon. I believe for a while now that virtual reality will play a second fiddle or kind of a sub role to the more mainstream augmented reality for the majority of, if not its entire life. At the very least until we can bring those two technologies together and there becomes no distinction between the real world and the virtual world. I had a feeling that this was going to be the case ever since I saw motion controls were being integrated more and more into VR headsets, but seeing footage of things like HoloLenses and Oculus Quests inside out tracking solidified in my mind that AR games are going to go absolutely nuts as soon as we get the tech to slim it down far enough. Picture it honestly. Rather than creating a fully digital field using stimulators for wind and grass and fighting boars in a fully virtual environment, going outside to a designated area or arena, having your headset map out the area and then just overlaying the boar in the space and fighting it out in a virtual field or augmented field that way, if it weren't for the lack of sword arts and force feedback, somebody could be forgiven for calling that sword art online. Technically, they should be more calling it ordinal scale, and it feels a little strange to think that ordinal scale, a property that in SAO's chronology ends up releasing after SAO, using technology that is developed afterwards, is going to end up happening first in our timeline, while VR on the level of SAO's is going to be the last part. Everyone, it feels a little strange right now, just because while my expectations probably sound really pessimistic, for the most part, I'm not particularly bothered by any of these things. I have a feeling that Oculus Quest and devices of its ilk, all-in-one, full-package experiences that show glimpses of what VR at its best has to offer today, with the simplicity of the experience that you can get out of something like a console or mobile device, are going to be more than good enough to tide us over until we manage to make a breakthrough that can take down the VR locomotion problem. Games like Beat Saber, Robot Recall, Echo VR, and such show the fun that VR's current paradigm is able to provide within its current constraints, while titles like Project Cars, Elite Dangerous, and Minecraft show that VR can enhance experiences we already have now in ways we don't expect. I have a feeling that we're going to get a lot more great VR titles as time passes, and developers continue to find ways to make use of VR's strengths and its current paradigm while working around its weaknesses. If VR headsets end up being glorified AR headsets, at the end of the day, that's still fine by me. I'm not going to say no to trying out Ordinal Scale just because I'm feeling salty over VR not being where it should be, or where I think it should be. Will VR in 2022 be a global juggernaut on the same scale as video games and movies? I'm not expecting that at all. I'm expecting a larger demographic than we currently have, but with more experiences and value than it currently has. It'll be an incremental but much appreciated improvement in every way from what we currently have now. We're still a long ways away from the nerve gear, but that doesn't mean the place we're at now and where we're going to be in the next few stops are all that bad. With all of this having been said now everyone, you now know what I'm expecting in regards to Sword Art Online and virtual reality in the year 2022. Doesn't that kind of make it weird that I'm counting my pennies, hitting the books, burning the midnight oil, and pumping iron for a VR rig that won't have anything to do with either of those things? After all, it doesn't seem likely that I'm going to get to helm the Sword Art Online 2022 project, and it also doesn't seem all that likely that my VR rig is going to be a commercially viable product for the vast majority of people. I'm building the thing myself and I'm expecting to spend well over three to four, if not five or six thousand dollars just building the suit, not even counting the PC rig that's going to be needed to run the software I have in mind. 
Well, expect the video soon that'll go over what's my deal in that regard. Thank you very much for watching this video, my fellow adventurers and dreamers. Please remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to get more content like this, to keep up with my VR rig, and to see my virtual dream become a physical reality over the course of the next few years. Till next time, this has been Gregory, logging out.